How are you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Today I'm talking about the benefits of fooling yourself. Now I'm not talking about this in a negative way, right? Fooling yourself um, in, you know, it has a lot of negative connotations. Um, we fool ourselves all the time about the stuff that we do to ourselves, right? The fact that we don't exercise enough or we eat the wrong foods or we drink alcohol or take other drugs. Um, and we tend to ignore all the information, all the uh, proof that these things are bad for us and um, we tend to um, sort of read the things and pay attention to the things that are telling us that um, you know alcohol might not be so bad for us after all you know I mean when you look at all the stuff about moderate drinking right it, it's all from the perspective of it's first of all most of it comes from newspapers you very rarely hear read scientific material on that, you know? I mean, yeah, who reads the scientific material anyway? Most of the information that we get is either off the internet, it's in newspapers and news reports, um, you know, popular TV shows, that kind of thing. And they're all, they all want to give you good news, right, about your bad habits, right? They all want to come out there with something outrageous and say, well, did you know that, you know, you can eat three bars of chocolate a day and you can still lose weight, you know? Or did you know that, you know, alcohol is, um, good for your heart, you know, and all this bullshit, you know, and um, what they're basically talking about is they're, they're, they're telling you a snippet of a story and that's all it needs for most people to latch onto that story and take a, a modicum of uh, hope from it, you know, and belief and an excuse to carry on and do what they're doing. So that is negatively fooling yourself. Now I'm talking about positively fooling yourself, right? Um, in the sense of um, when you start out this journey, most people don't know what they're going to do. They don't know um, how they're going to cope with things. They don't know how they're going to explain themselves to people. They don't know how they're going to um, just deal with life in general without their, uh, um, without their comforter, you know, the alcohol. The alcohol is helping them in so many different areas of their life to relax, to sleep, to socialize and blah, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's very it's very difficult for for people to imagine a life without that comfort right so a lot of people fear that they're going to make fools out of themselves you know that you know they're going to make fools out of themselves in front of other people their friends their family who you know are probably drinkers um and they're afraid of making mistakes of you know of saying to people yeah I'm quitting drinking alcohol or I'm doing this in my life I'm doing that in my life and then you know not having the confidence to pull through uh, giving into temptation and then having to backtrack and tell all these people well yeah um, you know like make excuses you know making fools of themselves that way you know another aspect of fooling yourself is pretending that you can do something that you can't do right and that in the beginning of any uh, big change journey involves uh, faking it until you make it you know it's pretending that you can do something and then um, putting yourself into uh, the position where you can do it you know and a lot of the time it's up here in your head if you believe and act as if you can do something then you can do it if you believe and act that you are a person who can quit drinking alcohol then you can quit drinking alcohol the opposite is also true if you believe and act that you are a person who can't quit drinking alcohol even if that's only um, you know you you in the forward show of everything, in what you're showing to everyone else, in what you're showing to yourself, in your conscious mind, is that you're full of confidence about this, but you've got all these doubts behind you, and underneath it all, you don't believe that you can do it, then that belief is going to come to the surface, and that belief is going to uh, ruin all your efforts at quitting drinking alcohol. Do you understand what I mean? You know, it's, it's your reality is basically your creation. You know, what you put out into the world from the inside out is your reality. You know, whether or not you believe that you can do this or you can't do it, that's what's going to make your reality true, you know. Um, another aspect of it is where people, they they don't like the shame that's attached to quitting drinking alcohol. You know, they feel like they're doing something wrong by quitting drinking alcohol, that everyone else is doing this thing, everyone else is drinking, and everyone else is drinking normally, right? Everyone else is, doesn't have a problem with drinking alcohol. See, first of all, the big problem with that is you don't know what other people have got because people keep this thing hidden, right? You've kept it hidden, right? You know, 
other members of your family, your friends, might have a little bit of a worry about you. Maybe, maybe not. But at the end of the day, nobody knows the extent of your problem but you yourself, right? And it's the same with everyone else. People don't wear these things on their sleeve because of the stigma attached to quitting drinking alcohol. Now, where's the stigma? You know, the stigma should be in the same case as somebody who's taking heroin or cocaine or doing something else that is really bad for them, right? You know, like when you're, when you're uh, an overeater and you continuously overeat, you can't hide that. You know, that just, it, you wear that on your body, you wear it around with you, you know what I mean? When you're a crap dresser, you wear that around with you, you know, you can't help that either, you know? Um, but the problem is with thinking on these lines about quitting drinking alcohol is that in the beginning you are vulnerable, right? Most people feel very vulnerable because they have to change so much and because they're um, opening themselves up to themselves probably for the first time in a long time, right? Without um, repressing all the uh, negativity about themselves, you know, their emotions, their, their problems, all that kind of stuff, right? So, you know, they, they have to face up to reality for the first time in a long time. And this makes them vulnerable. And that vulnerability is projected outwards onto other people, you know, and what other people think. For the most part, People are shocked when you quit drinking because they don't see it, you know. They, they, they might look at you and go, do you really have a problem with drinking? Or maybe, oh yeah, well, I've seen you drinking a few too many. I've seen you drunk a few times. Maybe you have, you know. But you know, at the end of the day, most people are too busy getting on with their own lives than to be worried about yours, right? So we're projecting our own vulnerabilities out on other people, right? Um, some people just don't like the idea of uh, other people progressing right and if they think that you quitting drinking alcohol it means that you're progressing um, beyond that relationship that you have with them or you're going to show them up you know you're going to show their alcohol problems up or their faults up or whatever you know that's when they start thinking about you and they don't like that you know a lot of people behave like that um, uh, and a lot of people do think that you know it's the only drug that where you can quit, where when you do quit, that you're seen to have a problem. But, and here's the big one, when you've stopped drinking for two or three months and you start living the benefits, when you stop drinking for a week and you start living the benefits, but I'm telling you, you know, especially after a month, two months, three months into it, and you start really living the benefits, you feel the benefits in your body and in your mind, when you start to feel your thoughts flowing a lot better. You know, you feel ideas coming up, you feel like you can tackle other things in your life and you start tackling other problems in your life. Um, then this uh, starts to show, it starts to emanate from you like, uh, you know, as just strength. This strength starts to come out of you. and. That's very magnetic to other people, and other people will start to look up to you and think, well, Jesus, you know, you're looking well on this, you know what I mean? If you've stopped drinking and you don't do this and you don't do that. You know, you're always going to get these people who are going, oh yeah, there's your man, look holier than now, you know. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't do any of this stuff, you know. What a Christian boy, you know, choir boy, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. You're always going to get that crap, but that's other people's problems, so who gives a fuck, you know. So what I'm saying with this, don't be afraid to fool yourself, is... You know, sometimes you have to be that, you have to be willing to put yourself out there and you have to be willing to make a fool out of yourself, right? Um, sometimes you've got to fake it until you make it. You've got to put yourself into the position where you are acting in a certain way before you can feel a certain way, you know? Um, you've got to put yourself into a position where you feel foolish, you know? Where you feel foolish doing certain things. Because a lot of these things you're going to be doing for the first time, you know? So don't be afraid of any of that, you know? Just make sure that it's positive. You know, you're aiming towards in a positive um, frame of mind. You know, how many times have you behaved foolishly throughout your drinking life because you've been drinking? You know, I can, I can probably count on my hand the times that I've negatively behaved foolishly without alcohol, right? Because I'm a, I'm a, normally I'm a very stoic person. I'm, I'm sort of straightforward. Um, I'm very conservative, 
you know, although uh, I'm liberal in, in my, my politics, but I'm very conservative in what I do, you know. I do try and do a lot of different things in my life, you know, and try, I'm trying to sort of get out of my comfort zone in that kind of area, but, you know, very level-headed and very straightforward, so. But the amount of shit that I did when I was on the drink, the amount of foolish stuff, the amount of foolish stuff that came out of my mouth that I did and said and, um, you know, my behaviours, you know, was just unreal. And that is, I just do not miss that at all. You know, because at the same time as you're doing this kind of stuff, and we call it, oh, well, it's only letting your hair down, you know? Bullshit, you know? It's acting like, you know, I've got loads of words I can say this, but I, I want to keep this as clean as possible. Um, look, you know, positive fool-making of oneself, right? This is a good thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone and being willing to make a fool out of yourself when you know that there's going to be a positive outcome, right? You're making a fool out of yourself now. You're, you're, you're stepping out of it and you're sort of pushing yourself to, um, you know, to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. Uh, you know, that is a positive because you know that you're, it's, you're at the bottom rung of the ladder and then you're going to step up and you're going to get a bit of perspective on things and you're going to get a bit more confidence about what you're doing. You see things in a different way. You see things from a different perspective. You step up another rung, rung and you see things from a much clearer perspective again. And like I say, you get to a stage in your life where you start feeling the strength. You start feeling the positive effect of not drinking, you know. You feel um, your emotions and you feel your thoughts are clearing up, your, your emotions start to flow better, your thoughts start to flow better. You as a person, as your life starts to flow better, you know. So don't be afraid of making a fool out of yourself, right? Don't be af afraid of um, just putting yourself out there in the beginning. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comments section. If you've got any uh, ideas about videos that you'd like to see me do, then uh, also put them down in the comments section. If you want to sign up for the Alcohol Mastery Starter Pack. It's over on the website, alcoholmastery.com. It's on the homepage. All you, know, you have to do is leave your full name, first name and email address, and I'll send out the stuff to you straight away. There's a whole lot of different stuff in there um, trying to help you to kickstart this alcohol free journey. Until next time, I'm Kevin O'Hara for alcoholmastery.com. Take good care of yourself. Keep the alcohol out of your mouth and stay safe. Onwards and upwards. Take care. Bye now.